Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's review the concept of momentum. Of course, we use the letter P for momentum, and momentum is defined as the mass times the velocity of an object. Now the type of problems you could run into are illustrated in these three examples. So we have to understand that the principle is that the initial momentum of the situation will always equal the final momentum. No matter what happens, momentum is always conserved through collisions. And so we could say that the mass times the velocity of the first object plus the mass times the velocity of the second object will always equal the mass times the velocity of the final result of that collision. Now, in this case, the two masses will stick together and therefore the sum of the two masses times the final velocity will equal the sum of the momentums of the two initial objects. I think the plural of momentum is momenta. But sometimes they don't stick together, and so therefore we have the initial momentum of the first object plus the initial momentum of the second object equals the final momentum of the first object plus the final momentum of the second object. And notice that the two final velocities are going to be different. They're going to be independent of one another. So we either have the situation where they stick together or a situation where they don't stick together. Well, if they stick together, energy will be lost, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But here you can see that we have two objects that collide with one another, they stick together, and together they have a final velocity. Remember that the velocity when we have momentum is actually a vector quantity, so what we should do is put a vector notation on the P and the V to indicate that direction is important. So even if we don't write those symbols, we, des we have to remember that the direction of the velocity is important, and if the velocity is to the left is negative, and to the right is positive. So you can see that V1 initial is a positive value, V2 initial is a negative, well actually it's a positive direction and a negative direction. So here we can say that we have M1 times Z1 initial plus M2 times V2 initial, and notice we put a negative there because the direction is negative. The magnitude is still V2 initial, but it's a negative direction. And that will equal the sum of the two masses times the final velocity. And then if we solve that for the final velocity, we have the momentum of the first object minus the momentum of the second object divided by the sum of the two masses. So we only have one unknown, which can be found like this. Typically, energy will then be lost. And so the lost energy will be the difference between the initial energy minus the final energy. The initial energy will be 1 half mv squared for the first object plus 1 half, one half mv squared for the second object. Notice that we're dealing with energy, we don't have to worry about the direction of the velocity because we're squaring the velocity. And then we subtract from that the final energy, which is one half times the sum of the two masses times the final velocity squared. So therefore we can use the change in energy using this equation and the conservation of velocity to find the final velocity. But what if they don't stick together? So here we have example two. Let's say a bullet is fired into a wooden block. It goes through the block, continues out on the other side. So there's a collision there, but notice that we now have two final velocities. So the equation now becomes like the second equation, m1 v initial plus m2 v initial equals m v1 final plus m2 v final. Notice I use small m for the mass of the bullet and big M for the mass of the blocks. I don't really need the one there. Uh, but anyway, we can write it like that. And then here I inserted the one. Uh, I don't have to insert the one. I could just leave the one out. So, all right. So notice that in this case, the block was not moving initially. So this portion goes to zero. There was no momentum associated with the big block, just with the bullet alone. If we know the initial velocity of the bullet and the mass of the bullet, we then have these two terms right here, and we do not know the final velocity of the two objects. There's now two unknowns, and you, can, you cannot solve this problem. But then they usually give you some other form of information, such as, hey, half the energy is lost. Okay, if that's true, then the amount of energy lost is equal to 50% of the initial energy, which is one half E sub naught. All right, so what we then do is we say the energy loss is half the initial energy because that's the only block that the bullet was moving, the block wasn't moving, and that therefore is equal to the difference between the initial energy and the final energy. So the initial energy would be one half mv1 squared, so this is the bullet, and this is the final, velocity, the final kinetic energy of the bullet and the final kinetic energy of the block. So now notice that we have this, all this will be known because we know the mass of the bullet and the initial velocity of the bullet, but we don't know the final velocity of the bullet, we don't know the final velocity of the block, 
But notice that if we solve this equation, and this equation simultaneously, we now have two equations, two unknowns, you can solve for that. Now we have a third example. The third example is two blocks colliding, so they both have initial velocity. They collide, then they, after the collision, they move away from each other, and again, we know that momentum is conserved. But sometimes they will tell you that the, the uh, collision was elastic. We had a, an elastic collision. Elastic collision implies that energy is conserved. So now we have two equations again. The conservation of momentum equation, but since they don't stick together, you end up with two final velocities that are unknown. If the masses are known, and if the initial velocities are known, then you know that the left side equation simply becomes a constant. Notice I made it easy by indicating that the mass of the big one here, the big mass, is twice the mass of the little one. So m's cancel out, and we're left with an equation that we can solve for one of the two unknowns, either v1 or v2. So I chose to solve this equation for v1, v1 final in terms of v2. You can also solve for v2 final in terms of v1. It doesn't really matter. But since they tell you now that energy is conserved, we can now use the equation, the energy conservation equation, that the initial kinetic energy of the two blocks is going to equal the final kinetic energy of the two blocks. And then, of course, on the left side, since the mass and initial velocities are known, we can solve that for a single number. And then on the right side, we end up with an equation in terms of V1 final and V2 final. Of course, they're squared in this case. So then what you do is you take the result here, V1 final, and you plug that into V1 final here. So now you get up, you get an equation, a quadratic equation, with only V2 final that you can then simply solve by solving that quadratic equation. So either you have a situation where the two blocks collide and they stick together and there's only one unknown, or you have a collision, they don't stick together, so you have two unknowns, V1 final, V2 final, but they give you some sort of information such as a certain percentage of the energy is lost. So you can also use the energy equation to then end up with two equations and two unknowns, and you'd solve it by solving for one of the unknowns and plug it into the other equation. Or they will tell you that the collision is elastic, so not only is momentum conserved, but energy is conserved as well. And so again, you end up with two equations, one from the momentum equation, one from the energy equation. You solve them simultaneously for the two unknowns, and you end up with both of the values for the final velocity. And that is typically what you will end up with with momentum-type problems. There's, of course, more to it than that, and we'll show you some more summary about momentum, and then later on about impulse, because impulse is related to momentum, and see how that's done. But at least this gives you a pretty good overview of the type of problems you will run into when you're dealing with momentum.